And welcome to your 2023 Ironman Chattanooga course preview. Your point-to-point -point swim for Ironman Chattanooga 2023 is a point-to-point -point in the Tennessee River. It is upstream of transition. Athletes will enter the water from a dock in a rolling start. Spectators will have a great opportunity to watch the entire swim as they walk alongside the swimmers on the Chattanooga River Walk. Athletes will exit the water at the beautiful Ross's Landing Park. You can expect a fast swim split here as all but the final stretch between the Red Turn Buoy and Ross's Landing Park is with the current water temperature in the mid-70s on race day, most likely, and which will make this a wetsuit race decision on the day. So be prepared for wearing one or not wearing one. Coach Wendy Mater, this is something that you're very familiar with. Take it away on how to navigate and prepare for this swim. I did Ironman Chattanooga in, 27, in 2018, and the swim was canceled because they had a lot of rain that year, so there was a high bacteria count. So even as a swimmer, I was still disappointed because I was really excited to experience a fast 2.4-mile swim downstream. I've done the half in Chattanooga quite a few times, so I was familiar with you know the, the way the current um, – was going into a current and going out of a current. So I would consider this almost a beginner friendly Ironman because of the downstream safety of the swim. It's close to shore, it's fast, it's spectator friendly. You either walk to the start or you take a bus and then um, you finish where your transition is. So definitely something that's there's not much to it because it's a downstream swim. And if you are an inexperienced swimmer, your training can, I think your training in the water can be a little bit lighter because you are going to rely on the being able to make the cutoff due to the nature of the downstream swim. And chances are higher that it's probably going to be non-wetsuit legal. But like you said, they're going to make that decision race day because it could vary depending on the rainfall and the, the weather conditions. And so even though I wasn't able to experience that swim the year I did it, I have gone down and spectated quite a few times. And it's really one of my favorites in the South. Now, we've talked about the 70.3 distance at the same race course mm -hmm. and the busing that you can take or decide to walk. And it is the full two and a half mile walk. So what do you, what's the recommendation or the pros and cons of taking the bus or making the walk race morning um, to the swim start? I think taking the bus is the way to go because it's more than a mile walk mm -hmm. and you want to make sure you give yourself plenty of time. So my, I get, my anxiety would be, where's the bus going to pick me up? Where do I find the bus? What if I can't fit on the bus? You know, am I going to be that one athlete that there's no room for? And that's definitely um, not logical way of thinking. It's a rational way of thinking. They have so many buses and they're going to tell you at the pre-race meeting where you can pick one up. And I'm one that the, the races that I have taken a bus, I get there at 4 a.m. So I make sure there's room for me. And so um, take the bus. I would take the bus. Some people will use the the war, the walk or the jog as their warm up before the swim. So that's also an option, and that's a pro um, in your favor if you decide to transport yourself there on your own. And so either way, you're gonna make it to the start of the race, and you're not gonna miss your wave. And strategies for uh, swimming along the current and the siding options because you're along the you can see the shore the entire time you do go under a, a few bridges so it's pretty straightforward you're not going to get off course too far thanks to the buoys and the shoreline yeah i mean you still want to practice it and you know you just want to be aware that there are buoys every hundred meters there's kayakers or safety people out there and you will have the shore to your left and you'll have kayakers and buoys to your right and so it's pretty straightforward. I mean, there is potential to still do a little zigzagging if you're not sighting. So you still want to understand how to sight. And I've included some videos to help you within the context of the program. Um, but like I said, if you're one of those weaker swimmers, this is one training plan that you can afford to swim a little bit less than if you were swimming in the ocean or if you didn't have the downstream carrying you to the finish. And now your 2023 Ironman Chattanooga bike course. This will not be a PR course because this is the longest Ironman course 
in the world, legendarily. Um, 116 miles. Athletes will ride 11 miles south of town before beginning two 47-mile loops in North Georgia. The additional four miles will be sure to give you an additional badge of honor on race day to show that you are more than an Ironman as you uh, travel through the course. Athletes will near the end of the loop, and they will get the opportunity to ride through historic Chickamauga. So two loops here, but it's longer than normal. And it seems like it's pretty straightforward with uh, the outs, and then you make that loop before making the final trek back into town. Um, go ahead and recap what it's like to, to ride, ride this course and how people should approach it. Yeah, so I would approach the first 11 or so miles that's on the flatter section. I would take that really easy. Use that as your warm-up. The year I did it, because we didn't have the swim, and usually the swim is my warm-up for an Ironman, um, I took it out a little bit too hard. And so you want to, you know, just kind of cruise that first part because then you'll hit some gentle, I call them gentle rolling hills. You could be someone who might even be able to do most of the climbs in their big, biggest gear because the year I did it at mile 60 or so, my um, shifting broke mm -hmm. and I was stuck in my biggest gear. So I had a hard time shifting. I was able to kind of manipulate my shifter to change some gears, but it wouldn't hold. And so I had to do a large portion of the course in my biggest gear. So they are challenging, but doable. And I, I really love these type of hills, rolling hills. And it's a very beautiful area of Tennessee and Georgia. And so plenty of support out there, close to cars. It's safe. No, no, no climb's going to make or break you. And so just kind of enjoy that. And you know, stay, you can probably stay arrow on a large portion of the climbs as well. But it is good to sit up and kind of stretch your back, stretch your legs when you when you have to. Your 2023 Ironman Chattanooga run course is as followed. You'll have a chance to see the scenic city as you complete two loops through downtown Chattanooga. The Tennessee Riverwalk, Veterans Bridge, North Shore, Walnut Street Bridge, and the beautiful Riverfront Parkway. The final stretch will bring you down Riverfront Parkway towards a spectacular finish at Ross's Landing along the Tennessee River. This is technically 2.25 loops of the course uh, because of some of the out and backs and how the finish is offset of the loops. This looks beautiful. This looks um, like there's a lot going on with the views and uh, the scenery. Again, this is one of my favorite marathon courses because of the water and the bridges. You go over bridges like three or four times, very spectator friendly. In my mind, it's a somewhat flat course. It's kind of like Ironman Coeur d'Alene. There is some elevation, but over the course of 26.2 miles, it's not that much. You're going to hear stories of what's called Barton Hill. And because that comes at mile, you know, on the second loop, like 19 or 20, it's more challenging than when it comes on the first loop. So people think it's some monstrous hill that they're about to climb. If you do hills in your training, you're going to be prepared for Barton Hill. And if you do hills in your training at the at the end of your longer runs, so your your body gets used to running up hills in the later half of your longer run, you're going to be prepared for Barton Hill. In the big picture, it's not as it's not as hard as people make it out to be. And this is going to be great for your family and friends who come out to support you because of all the different out and backs and the the multiple loops of this course and just how it's designed. And there's just so many things to do in Chattanooga. I think the whole town is very family friendly oriented with just the amount of things that kids and families can do. Mm -hmm. 